Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling YouTube show. My name is Hobo Tom. And my girlfriend again, she's off working. She had kind of a scare today at the school she was at. So so she's staying home. All's good though, folks. Reasons why I don't want to work in a school anymore. Rather be a hobo. But enough of that. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, previously, wow, oh, is this shirt shrink, shrinking or my arm's getting bigger? I don't think it's fat either. Muscle. Some form of muscle. Well, I am working the truck now, so I'm getting a little bit more muscle, muscle. But again, let's talk about Lucha Underground! I have to figure out a way to put some song lyrics on this thing. There's one song, especially for Lucha Underground. I want to try and get, I have to figure out stuff. I'm trying to stay away from copyright, copyright, oogie boogies. Also, you're going to get a little bonus. Bonus, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own Frito burritos. Very yummy, very good. In fact, I think they were stolen from one of my coworkers at work because I brought them in to work. And someone ate all the Frito burritos. It's not good. But um, I have the one NXT prediction videos up. So again, please take a couple of minutes. Watch, comment, subscribe. Let me know what your comments are. And what your predictions are for NXT TakeOver. Um, probably later, I'm going to start to set up for the live stream event on Saturday. Saturday for sure. Saturday, Saturday night for sure. I have to get some pictures. Meet my wrestling card out. I'm going to do that while this video probably uploads and gets published. And I want to see it's going to start probably about 7.50 ish. I can never guarantee that. It will definitely start by 8 by the opening because I don't think NXT does pre shows. SummerSlam, I am going to start probably around 5. I'll have to figure out how to... Ooh, I could run a, my other computer. So much stuff to work on. Technical stuff. And Dr. Tom does not like... Not like me, nor does he like my office. Mahoba, what do you expect? Bubba is whose dryer is way too freaking powerful. Just on one sleeve, too. But let's get to some Lucha Underground. Lucha, 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 Lucha. This was amazing. I could not believe they let the people wrestle the way they wrestle, who they wrestle, when they wrestle, how they want to wrestle. I, I'm dumbfounded sometimes. Um, again, they always start off with a recap. And the fun thing is, it's only like a two minute recap. At most. Um, again, then they always have a, a little lead into the show. Uh, Antonio Quino was going through his mail again. There was the <laughs> wedding invitation for Johnny Mundo and, and Taya Valkyrie. Do they even call her Taya Valkyrie? Or just call her Taya? I don't know. Whatever it was, it was a wedding invitation. Yeah, this, this is never going to let us last. Cobra Moon comes in. Demands a match for the trios championship. He's like, fine, yeah, woman scorn, good, whatever. Um, <laughs> and it was really good. Uh, then, then you you cut always to Matt Stryker and Van Pierre. Let me tell you what what's going on in the show. And it's just it's nice to know. That way, I know when when to start cooking, when to shower, when to take a break. What's the popcorn match? It, it's fun. And the way they interact between them and, and the idiot crowd members behind them, they are getting a little bit more annoying, though, especially the people in the background. They used to just, like, sit there and chant. Now they're like, yeah, Lucha Underground. So, but let's start off. Um, we have the Ravage 5. It's now down to two members. It's Saltador and Paul London. And it was another sacrifice because Paul London just, they just don't want the Rabbit Tribe anymore. I'm fine with that. I wonder if 
Paul Lund is going to sacrifice next. Indeed. But this, but this match features Saltador, who got volunteered, by the way, by Jack London. Um, versus Ma Monster Matanza. This match didn't last, last like literally a minute. Wow, that didn't even last a minute. And again, it was a squash match. It's a ham sandwich match. Um, there is no more rabbit try besides Paul London. Hey, what can you do? Next, you had a promo between Havoc and Mac and Killshot promo. Killshot does not like his partner. Does not like Son of Havoc. In fact, he punks Son of Havoc. That's going to bite him in the hiney soon. Son of Havoc's really good. He'll probably stay longer than Killshot. I'll say he's probably more of a Lucha Underground regular than Killshot is. I think Killshot was also in, I think, Ring of Honor and Impact or Global Force Wrestling, whatever they call it now. So we'll see what happens. Again, they have really weird contract situations there in Lucha Underground. There are rumors that Pentagon Jr. is going to go to WWE. That might happen. Probably sometime he drops belt to cage. That makes sense because then Aztec Warfare 4 or 5, I think, starts right around September. Then they take like a couple months off. So you never know what happens. It was a couple months <coughs> when they released Prince Puma, who is Ricochet. So they might do the same thing with him. You never know. But again, this led to a match between Killshot and Dragon Azteca Jr. for the Gift of the Gods Champion, which is, by the way, the greatest spell ever designed. It's just huge and just all, I mean, metal on metal and connected by metal. Good. It's a nice looking belt. And this was a really fun match. I mean, this was a filet mignon match. I think the the priest they finally they showed pictures they showed the pictures of a priest there. I'm like, what's a priest doing there? And I guess he's going to be presiding over the marriage between Johnny Mundo and Taya. Kind of macho man esque, I guess. Although I think Ricky. Mundo is going to get involved somehow. So we'll see what happens. But again, the crowd was chanting for kill shot. I do like the way they walk down to the ring. That It just makes it seem a little special. Especially the, uh, Dragon Ass Tekka Jr. He is probably one of the greatest, greatest counter wrestlers of all time. What he can do, they're just like... I didn't know you could do that. He he almost gives me those Rob Van Dam moments. If you watch ECW with Rob Van Dam, you're like. Champion as well. A lot at stake here for Killshot. Bottom the line. Or neither. Good point. 
point. I always got good points, brother, when you let me get them in. Second year. Electric chair position. You see the fingers are locked. They'll drive over to the bottom. The fingers spin around. Rewind one. Six. Kip shot down. Kip shot rolls underneath the bottom rope. That right there was something that set Lucha Libre on the map. Rey Mysterio Jr. at 14 years old pulled that move off of television in AAA in Mexico. And I'm telling you right now that that got it rocking. Of course, Rey Mysterio is El Dragon Azteca Jr.'s mentor. So, oh. Stop is a move that Killshot likes to use because it's a move that can come out of anywhere and it can be hit on an opponent of any size. Look at Killshot. Damn, dog. You, you may not like his attitude, Killshot, but you have to respect his athletic ability inside and outside of the ring. Of course, who can forget the Hell of War match at Ultima Lucha 3? Hang on, cover here. Well, for somebody with his experience. Wrestlers can do that? What? Uh, oh, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. How does he do that? Right, cheese pup? How do they do that? Come on over here for a second. Oh, say hi to everyone. Is that what you're going to do? Because I'm bringing you the vet on Monday? Give me a punch in the face. I'll have to learn how to sell better. I'm sorry. Again, this match, amazing. I mean, both. I think really stiff match, too. I think Dragon S. Second Jr. busts his lip. He had, he had like, cuts on his back. I mean, there were dueling chants, and they were loud, too. If they had 205 in a small arena, or when NXT does its shows and armories and, and kind of neighborhood gyms, they, they can get really loud. This is the way it was here. I mean, 205 Live, no matter how great Cedric Alexander match, never going to get to this loud. And I know others, um, Stephen Larson, I'll, I'll give them credit. They actually thought of the idea of actually having 205 Live in really a smaller venue, where it probably would really greatly increase the crowd participation and really get the crowd into it versus being stuck at the end of a two and a half hour show and the crowd wanting dark match in a big hockey arena I don't know it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be in a legion of as hall it doesn't have to be an armory it doesn't have to be a neighborhood gym it just has to be like a smaller convention center probably um, they could probably do it here in Daytona Beach at the one convention center. Would probably be hot. Ah, not Daytona. Daytona Beach gets a weird crowd at the convention center, and it's a little bit too big for the small old neighborhood gym. But enough about that stuff. Again, Stephen Larson, thank you for that great idea. The only thing I do. Sweet. Yeah, man, Larson. Too sweet, Steve. You're gonna get me copyright, copyrighted again too. Again, and then there was a great cat and mouse segment. And stiff shots. It was amazing. This was again. It was a flaming young match. Dragon Azteca Jr. went over. Killshot just looked bummed, and he's like, "I lost. I have to wrestle again too." I must say, f this. Then there was again a really good promo between Dragon between Drago and Aerostar. And the thing I love about Lucha the Lucha Underground promos, they're short point, they have cheesy effects, but it makes its point. Hey, you give it they say you have two minutes. Here's what you have to say. Give me some fire at the end. I mean, a big light shining in your eyes. That's it. And they do the best they can. And I appreciate them because it's, it's fun. Again, the, when, when, the cheesier it is, sometimes the better it is. Then you have a tree or tornado match with this reptile tribe of Dago, Jeremiah Snake, and Cobra Moon versus Son of Havoc, the Mac, and Killshot. 
This was amazing. I mean, the crowd was chanting, Return of the Mech. Return of the Mech. And then Son of Havoc. I mean, the fact that they are allowed to do so much stuff. Just, just watch. The Mac can fly for being a big guy. Son of Havoc can fly. Kill Shot can, can, has a good aerial assault. Dago has a good aerial assault. Cobra Moon has a good aerial assault. The only one who's, who's not really flippy stuff oriented is Jeremiah Snake. And hey, I can live with that. Again, this was a flaming young match. It was amazing. This shows that really anyone can wrestle anyone. And I challenge the WWE. I challenge you. Have any of your women wrestlers wrestle a match like Cobra Moon. The WWE would get fans from Kathmandu to watch the just the women wrestle if they let them wrestle the way Cobra Moon wrestles. Cobra Moon's a woman. Becky Lynch is a woman. Cobra Moon's so much better as a wrestler, or at least on TV, she has a much bigger repertoire than, than Becky Lynch. And don't yell at me. Becky Lynch is, is good. She has personality. She's cute. She's a very good wrestler, very technically based. But she does not do the moves that Cobra Moon does. And again, Cobra Moon was allowed, she was taking bumps from Kill Shot, Son of Havoc, the Mac. She was delivering shots to Kill Shot, Son of Havoc, the Mac. I mean, she's being used as a weapon by, by, with Jeremiah Snake, doing amazing stuff. The WWE just want them, let the, let the women do this. And it would really elevate because I'm, I somewhat want to see the Evolution pay per view in October, which is going to be the all women's pay per view. It's either going to, the thing is with the WWE, it's only one of two things it's either really good or really bad. We've seen both of them. Very rarely is there a funny middle, especially with pay per views. So that'll be interesting. I mean, you watch Lucha Underground, uh, Evil East, Cobra Moon, before she got blacklisted for, for going into business for herself. Um, Sexy Star. 
Taya, Melissa Santos can somewhat hold her own in a match. Um, what other woman is there? Oh, um, Mariposa. They can all wrestle. They can they can hang with the guys too. And some of those guys are are pretty good. I mean, when Johnny Mundo gives Mary Pose or, or, or no, it was uh, Sexy Star. Like they, they had a really darn good steak, steak and surf and turf match. I mean, you could tell like, they were doing moves. Granted, you can see where Johnny Mundo was protecting her a little bit, but still they were going back and forth. Sexy Star seemed a little off that night. I don't know. Wrestlers are funny like that. But he was, he, I mean, they were pulling off moves left and right. You could tell for some moves, he was really protecting her, like for body slams, suplexes, any of the really big stuff that that, that he could. Um, again, when he does a sp the Spanish fly off the top rope, amazing. And then around the world were Starship Pain. I mean, he can only do so much, but you could tell, he's like, are you okay? You just see him poke his head, and you could kind of see his lips moving. He'd be like, huh? Again, wrestlers, competitive people are kind of goofy like that. But again, it was a really darn good match. And the Reptile Tribe won, which teases tension now between Killshot, Son of Havoc, and the Mac, all three of them. Uh, Killshot just beats, uh, sets up, again, just sets up Killshot versus Son of Havoc, probably at Aztec Warfare. Um, again, it's a ready made thing. You have three people that don't really work together well as a team. One has a super ego, the other two are a little more humble. But again, Killshot comes in, just he talks and just talks down to it. So don't give, and I, yeah, I don't give it shit. Whoa. And I know Elray does a lot of cursing, in fact, late at night, late, late, they do show boobies and down there too. That's late at night, and I think when they have like the old '70s kind of B-ish movies, and that was really the main part of the crowd. Then you had the promo with Cage, because this set us up for the Last Man or Machine Stepping match next week. God, it's gonna be um, of Cage and Pentagon Dark. Yeah, Pentagon Dark. Promo. It's like, oh my. Pentagon jumps Cage. They just start kicking and punching the snot out of each other. And <laughs> Cage move. It had to be a plant in the in the stands because cause he took a super kick like a champ from Pentagon Jr. The cameraman got beat up. Security guy got beat up. Heck, Pentagon Jr. even broke arm of a priest. I mean, if, if you thought Daniel Bryan's chest looked like hamburger meat for his gauntlet match, whew, this is going to be really brutal. Again, two stiff workers and not so much un, not, not, not unsafe, very safe, but the chops they give each other, they're stiff. Good. Again, everyone's whoever got in the way was just getting beat up. Don't get in the way of those. And that was it. And then, of course, as always, it sets up a little bit for next week. They have a really goofy promo. And that's one of the fun things about Lucha Underground. They always, they always do something goofy at the end. Um, next week's going to be the Mac versus Mill Marichas in a Haunted House match. Antonio... Quano puts on like this goofy witch's hat with a spider hanging hanging from it. The Mac just took it, put it on his head, own head. Well, I'm just going to have. Oh, what was it? I know he almost said it too. It's in my notes somewhere. Just cost us our trios titles. I'm on him next week. 
I want nothing more in the world than to see that mark. But you've already got yourself a match this week. I do? Oh, yes. A match asked for specifically by Katrina. You and Mil Muertes in the first ever haunted house match. Slapshot. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. The, the full promo. It just looked like a. It looked like some. The way the announcer was saying it, it almost sounded like the last hockey game of Slapshot. But it was, it was something. This is doing it really. Uh, and then it kind of faded to black. But again, it was a really darn good episode. Again, thank you for watching. Add a little bonus content. If you want to learn how to make Frito Burritos, the favorite food of wrestling fans everywhere, I'm going to put up my little recipe for some Frito Burritos. Please feel free to enjoy. I'm sorry I forgot to post it earlier. Again, as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And probably to... Hello and welcome again. To the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling YouTube show. My name is Hobo Tom. And my girlfriend again, she's off working. She had kind of a scare today at the school she was at. So so she's staying home. All's good though, folks. Reasons why I don't want to work in a school anymore. Rather be a hobo. But enough of that. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, previously, wow, oh, is this shirt shrink, shrinking or my arm? Hello, welcome again to Cooking with Hobo Tom. Yes, um, I was gonna, make, I, I was gonna make this video. Kind of thought about it tonight. Mm, what's this? That's everyone's yummy, delicious Frito burrito. Yes. Um, let me tell you what I did very quickly. Here we have Hoonie Microwave Oven. Ooh, Microwave Oven. For about 15 seconds, you microwave a burrito shell, a little generic, generic burrito shell. Here I have kind of the main stuffing. I have, because I'm a hobo, I don't use El Taco meat. I don't know if you can see that that, that well. I have, and some hot salsa. Let's see here. So there's the ground chicken package. There's the salsa container down in there as well. Kind of, I was going to make this and I was hungry and thirsty. And again, you have... So there's the tequila and cherry cola. Yummy stuff. Then you take, um, I think the key to making this, you have to kind of put it towards the edge. You get about two spoonfuls. Kind of difficult because I'm going to hold the camera. You get about two spoon, two, maybe three, two and a half spoonfuls. Filling, because again, I don't have the proper cheese sauce. I'm using Alfaco cheese sauce, or however where, where the packaging is. Yeah, everyone knows in basic cheese sauce. Yum, yum, yum. Kitty cat, don't drink tequila. Again, probably about two spoonfuls of cheese sauce. You know it's cheesy. Now you have food. Of course, you want some real cheese. You get a good pinch of Fiesta blend cheese. Of course, never forget your Frito chips. Again, my name is Hobo Tom for a reason. I have L basic L generic corn chips. And you don't want to pack it too much because the real trick to this is let's see here, probably gonna get part of the pan. And you kinda roll tuck, tuck edge, tuck and poke filling in, poke filling. Roll, tuck, tuck, and have flap side down. There you have your homemade Frito burritos. I may or may not have some thin, thin chips with that. 
to figure that out. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. This is how to make your homemade Frito burritos. My name is Hobo Tom, and you're watching the Hobo and the Girlfriend Wrestling Ch Wrestling Podcast. Thank you guys. Bye. Mmm, Frito burritos. She said, "Get away from my Frito burritos." You act like I don't like I don't.